I am Canon Ronald Branch, priest in charge of St. Margaret of Antioch and St. Jerumen Gonzalez, welcoming you on this day of Pentecost to our virtual service. At this time, normally, we would be singing Power in the Blood and Come Holy Spirit. Through this medium, we continue to bring to you our Sunday morning meditations. With me today is Miss Alicia Barry and Miss Tokara Johnson. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, he will not stumble nor sleep for the lord is thy keeper the lord is thy shade upon thy right hand upon thy right hand for the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore. More. the 
lift up mine eyes. He is my King. All of my help cometh from the Lord. Lift up mine eyes unto the The reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others stared and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I see. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel today is taken from the gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. Glory to Christ, our Savior. When it was evening of the day of resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are returned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ our Lord. Today on our liturgical calendar, we remember <clears throat> the day of Pentecost. That day when Jesus fulfilled his promise that he had made to his disciples that he would not leave them comfortless, 
and that he would send the comforter to be in them. It was now 10 days, according to Luke and the liturgical calendar, after the ascension. It was now 50 days after the resurrection, Easter day. And that's where we get the word Pentecost, because it means 50th. So this was the 50th day after Easter, or 10 days after the ascension of Jesus into the heavens. It was on this day that the Spirit came. The disciples had been waiting for the last 10 days for this Spirit that Jesus had spoken about. And now, when the Spirit came, came the tongues of fire and came upon the disciples. We hear about the wind blowing strongly through the house where they were housed. We hear about the many people from different nations coming together and the disciples talking in the languages of these people, even though they did not have any classes to learn these languages. The Spirit of the Lord empowered them and they began to talk in languages and the people understood them in their native tongue. What a sight. What a happening. This happened to usher in a new dispensation of the Spirit for well, Jesus had promised that from here on, the Spirit be, will be within the disciples and by extension be, be in us. Let us understand that when Jesus made that promise and when he fulfilled the promise on Pentecost Day, the whole idea of bringing all these nations together meant that the Spirit of the Lord was to be spread abroad every nook and cranny across the world. And that is what empowers us even unto this day. For it reminds us over and over that those with the Spirit do not have to have a monopoly on things because God gave us different gifts. The same God, but different gifts to build up the body of Christ. And therefore, it is indeed a joyful day as we examine our churches and understand why we have people exercising those different gifts across the church, the body of Christ. So there are silvers around the altar. So there are choirs to lead the singing. So there are lectors to do the reading. So there are the altar guild to prepare the church for service. There are ushers to usher people to their seats. And all of these are gifts that God has given his people to exercise as church. And for us to understand that no one is greater than the other. This is the gift that God has given to each of us. And we are to respect that and to understand that. I'm saying that because in the reading from 1 Corinthians today, what happened there is that there was 
little problem in the Corinthian community. People comparing the different gifts. If I could speak in tongue, it, it means that I had the spirit. And if others couldn't, then they didn't have the spirit. Paul had to unravel this unfortunate thinking. He had to make it clear that we are each given a gift in the body of Christ. And we are to respect each other's gifts. In fact, he carries it even further. He says, when one part of the body is sick, the whole body seems to be sick. When one part of the body rejoices, the whole body rejoices together. He gives us clear warning that this is not about us. It is about the Spirit working through us all for the common good. And oh, if we can get this message and understand it, how well it will serve us on this pilgrimage. For over and over, it is very easy to hear people speculating about others who have different gifts and wondering why they didn't have it. God has given us special gifts to use for the building up of his kingdom. And let us do it, and do it all for the glory of God. Not for the applause of men, but for the glory of God. And Jesus was had sent out his disciples once to do some ministry, to heal the sick. And they returned jubilant in spirit, high-fiving one another because of the marvelous results they had. And Jesus had to say to them, don't get carried away with that. Be thankful that your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. And that is all for the glory of God. Too often we monopolize the gift that we have received and believe that this is what we can do and we can do it better than others when what has been given to us, we have been given the gift through the power of the Holy Spirit to share to others. So that is what Pentecost is about. That is what Jesus expects of us. Not to monopolize the gifts but to share them around and to be able to work together. And that's why in Corinthians 12, we are given a picture of the body with the eyes having their function as distinct from the ears and the hand having its function as distinct from the feet and all working together in harmony for the body. It is the same for the church. Yes, this is what is expected of us as church. In these times, when we have been, the doors here have been locked for the past months, the church has been taking care of the needs of the community. We have reached out to the community in very special ways to give them assistance with their daily needs. The church has been more outside, more in the community than it ever was. 
in these times. And sometimes events happen in our lives to give us a new perspective of how we ought to do what God has called us to do. Let us never forget these things. This whole COVID-19 experience bears many lessons for us. Well, it carries us into different places that we never expected to go. In normal circumstances, I would be standing here before a large crowd talking about Pentecost and the historical Pentecost. Today, we can talk about Pentecost and look and see what it means for us in these circumstances. For indeed, it calls us to ask ourselves the questions, how can I serve God by using the gifts he has given me in a better way? How can I reach out and touch others in a meaningful way? Always remembering that these gifts that we have been given, we have been given them to share with others. It is all about others. It is less about ourselves and it is about others. How others understand what Jesus promised his disciples and how he fulfilled those promises. And now that he has fulfilled those promises through his disciples, he shows us what we are to do with the gifts he has given us. Our reading today came from John. In John's Gospel, Easter evening is Pentecost. But when we read Luke, Luke gives us the liturgical understanding of Pentecost coming 50 days after Easter. John, on the other hand, gets Pentecost into resurrection evening, Easter evening. And it is always important for us to understand that while Luke takes the liturgical bend, John takes the theological bend. Make us understand that what we have been given is important for us to exercise. One of the gifts that John emphasizes is the whole question of forgiveness. It invites us to look and see how we have forgiven others. For he reminds his disciples and by extension reminds us the gifts, the forgiveness that we extend to those who will be forgiven as opposed to those sins that are not forgiven and are retained. God speaks to us today and says to us that what he expects of us, having given us these gifts, is for us to share for the common good, for the building up of his kingdom, all for his glory. You know, the story is told about a young boy performing on his flute before a large crowd. A concert is in progress. And they are so thrilled with how he played his flute that at the end of his presentation, the whole crowd stood up and applauded. One man sat down. The man who sat down was the one who tutored this young boy to play the flute. And when the young boy looked and he saw that the whole crowd was standing, but his teacher was seated, 
he began to cry. As the crowd sat down, after the applause, the teacher stood up. And the teacher made a salient point. He says, I can appreciate what he has done because I know and have the music scores to say that he played wonderfully well. We are on this journey and we are playing our part, but it is God who will determine how well we have played. He has the scores and he knows how well we have played. May God continue to bless us as we use the gifts he has imbued us with for the building up of his kingdom. Amen. <laughs>
what must we do to be saved? Peter shared the simple gospel message with them. Turn from sin, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Peter continued preaching to the crowd, telling them that the promise of forgiveness of sins through repentance and baptism was for them, their children, and everyone who would believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Peter urged the people to save themselves and turn away from the path of the evil Jewish leaders. About 3,000 people who heard Peter's message that day believed and were baptized. They devoted themselves to the disciples' teaching about all the great works Jesus had done and his call for us to love each other. This group of new believers met to learn, fellowship, and pray together, just as we do today. This was the birth of the Christian Church.
Today, in our announcements, we remember in prayer Jennifer John, who hasn't been too well. She has been the one spearheading our LENS program and assisting also in a leadership position with the distribution of the hampers to the needy. So we remember Jennifer in prayer. We also remember Terry Ann Reed, who hasn't been too well and recuperating. Remember her in prayer. And we pray for the Fraser family, for Gemma Fraser lost her husband. And so we pray with them at this time that God will give them strength to be overcomers in their respective situations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for sending the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us in all that we undertake and to give us the gifts to use for the building up of your kingdom. Be with us in this noble endeavor, now and forever. Amen. We pray for clergy and people, almighty and everlasting God, from whom comes every good gift, good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the helpful spirit of your grace, and that they may truly please you, pour upon them the continual dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. For a parish here at Belmont and Gonzales, Almighty and everlasting God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for a common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. We thank you all for viewing us through this medium and pray that you will have a peaceful and enjoyable Pentecost day. Amen. Lord, give me you. 
I hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Give me you Everything else can wait Give me you I hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Give me you Everything else can wait Lord, give me Jesus, Jesus.
Let your living water 